everyone. I'm Ashley Sorensen. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist and director at Psyche and Soma Psychotherapy in Fullerton, California. And my name is Beth Nen, and I'm also a pre-licensed therapist um, working at Psyche and Soma Group Therapy. And we're recording on a couple different screens today, so um, thanks for joining us. And um, we just wanted to, in supervision, we've been um, discussing how for ourselves and with clients there's been this um, like trend. sort of need, yeah, a trend, a need um, for maintaining some consistency in our lives as well as being adaptable and flexible with everything that's going on in this pandemic. So um, Efnan had a great idea to um, share some information with you about maintaining that consistency and adaptability through these really strange times. Um, while utilizing self-care and some grounding techniques that we'll share along the way. Yes, definitely. So um, I just kind of want to give um, some of the uh, definitions that I think consistency and adaptability mean. So consistency um, is making, uh, creating structure in your day, uh, allowing yourself to um, Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, okay so uh, basically, um, I'll just tell you what, th this is my subjective definition of what that means, is when you're allowing yourself to have some sort of stability um, and creating a sense of normalcy in your day. Mm -hmm. uh, so it may look different to anyone. So whether that's creating a schedule, sticking to it, whether that's morning, day, or night, mm -hmm. um, it's allowing yourself to still feel like, um, the world is in order, your world, your vision, your reality. Um, and adaptability is, you know, through the changes and turbulence uh, that's constantly happening in this pandemic, mm -hmm. um, we're constantly being, you know, just given new information. And so being inundated with all this, a, uh, lot. a lot, yeah, it's just, it's been a lot. Yeah. And um, given, you know, uh, talking to clients and just kind of our own observations in our personal life. It's uh, it's just one thing after another. And so we're like, whoa, I kind of feel like we need to slow down here, kind of take a breather, reassess and regroup. Yeah, um, and I'm on the same page with you in some of those definitions. Um, I, I think having consistency and adaptability is a great life skill regardless of mm -hmm. a pandemic. Absolutely. Um, because and I, I've noticed in myself with people I work with, just people in my life, like um, our egos really like to maintain that control and that routine and that yeah. ritual, and we need that. Um, but there's also something about being in more of a flow state or being able to expand a little bit mm -hmm. um, that really helps us bounce back or bounce into a new way of life and living. So yeah. um, I love this idea of finding that balance of consistency and adaptability because both are needed. Um, Absolutely. Um, and what you brought up definitely uh, sparks another thought about uh, embracing change and uncertainty in yeah. everyday life outside of just this period of time um, because it's been uh, something that can create like daily stress. And so when we talk about, you know, chronic stress, which can be accumulated throughout mm -hmm. the years, if yeah. we're not addressing it and we're not repairing our bodies, then it really weighs on us. It actually um, shortens our longevity. Mm -hmm. It shortens our lifespan, our uh, health. Yeah. Um, so, so a lot of these things, can, um, you know, are taken seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess I just also want to preface this with, um, as we talk about consistency and adaptability and how to utilize both or live with both and all these changes that are going on, um, there is no wrong way to be dealing with this pandemic we're in a crisis, um, we just want to offer some information about what's happening psychologically or on a nervous system level um, through this, through this heightened stress and anxiety. Um, so take what feels fitting to you, leave the rest. Um, there's no right or wrong way to deal with this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so some of our intentions, we've touched on a little bit of them, but some of our intentions for this mini series is um, to offer some grounding tools that Afnan will be um, sharing with us, and maybe I will as well. Um, but we'll be doing some practices together that you can use on a daily basis if they feel fitting for you. 
Um, and then offering some information about what happens in the nervous system when we're really dysregulated or stressed out um, and what your body's trying to tell you in those moments. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it's just a way to have a discussion and try to find some connection with um, anyone watching. Um, and let us know if we can support you in any way. If any of what we have to say feels fitting, feel free to reach out to either one of us. You can check out our website, psycheandsomatherapy.com. That's P-S-Y-C-H-E and Soma, S-O-M-A dot com. Sorry, psycheandsomatherapy.com. Yes. Um, and Or you can contact either one of us directly, and we'd love to talk with you. Um, and if you have any helpful tips or information, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And we are open to any discussion. Yes, we are. So yeah. We're looking forward to this. And... Um, do you want to share what will be coming up in the next couple videos? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the the next couple of videos, um, Ashley already touched upon, uh, she'll be discussing the nervous system, uh, what it looks like when you're in a fight, flight, or freeze mode, um, or hold, actually can paralyze, be paralyzed. Um, and, and so kind of like what's happening in the body and the brain. Um, and then along with that, following the next series to that would be um, some mindfulness techniques, uh, utilizing your five senses mm -hmm. uh, to ground yourself um, and really be present in the here and now. So increasing your mindfulness to your surroundings and uh, lower, lowering your uh, heart rate um, is something that we always practice. Uh, so that's one technique. Another one would be deep breathing, okay. um, learning uh, how to do breath work in a way, uh, just incorporating in your day so you can increase your oxygen levels. Yes. Oxygen is always good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes when we're stressed, we are we have shallow breathing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, let's, uh, you know, kind of um, restore and rejuvenate our bodies so. and um, how can we find a little bit of expansion during this time of crisis where there is a lot mm -hmm. of constriction things are on hold yeah. um, there's a lot of restriction in ways so mm -hmm. how can we find these little moments of expansion absolutely so. yeah and there's a another technique that um, because we are staying at home for the majority of us <laughs> we are six feet we apart are, we are six feet apart yes yeah. Um, is we'll, we'll also do like a family activity where you can do it with your awesome. loved ones and your children, um, you know, incorporating other activities where your children are also learning how to regulate all this uncertainty as well. This is tough for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I can't imagine uh, like parents staying at home with their children all day long and you just kind of need to take a breather. Um, just I want to, you know, we're here to equip you know you along with everyone else that can benefit from this knowledge um, and so the another technique that I would like to go over is like a mental visualization hmm. having like a mental getaway since we, you know we can't go there physically <laughs> well so let's just go see it off to somewhere else <laughs> I like it. Yeah. temporarily yeah. I think there's something really powerful about our imagination and what mm -hmm. our psyche can come up with so absolutely I think our imaginations can be a great tool to absolutely help us, yeah. Yes. All right. Well, I'm excited for this. Um, thanks thank for you. joining us on our first video, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Yes. Thank Take you for care. tuning in. Bye. Bye.